Hi everybody, it is January 7, 2018, California, oh California. You guys in California, if you can move, if you have the means, and you can do it, you should do it. Man, you've got so much going on. Severe flu brings medicine shortage. Packed ERs and a rising death toll in California. Same thing happening in the UK, same thing happening in other states. Um, I read an article earlier today. Churches, churches are telling their parishioners, don't shake hands with anybody. Don't shake hands because you could infect somebody. Um, yeah, listen to this LA Times article. Health officials said Friday, that 27 people younger than 65 have died of the flu since October. And that is three times more than last year. Flu activity spiked sharply in late December and continues to grow. Oh, no one talks about all of the aerosol spraying. But the flu continues in Arizona. Uh, I've heard from subscribers, Dallas, Houston, and other areas of the country. Everybody is sick around them. So Riverside and San Bernardino counties. Now Riverside was, and San Bernardino? I'm not sure about San Bernardino. But Riverside was one of those areas burned up. And we have to wonder what they were spraying, perhaps including including uh, biologicals into the retardant that was dumped on those areas. Just speculating. But ambulance services have been severely strained because of the number of flu calls coming in. Emergency rooms are so crowded that ambulances arriving at hospitals, they can't immediately unload their patients so they're unable to leave for incoming 911 calls. It is the H3N2 strain which is particularly dangerous and yeah the flu vaccine typically doesn't work as well against the H3N2. Every single year we hear that the flu vaccine that people received was not for the strain of flu that hit. It's amazing that people still go get that flu vaccine. But you can get the flu if you get that flu vaccine. Tamiflu. I guess that's the like number one medicine that um, doctors prescribe if somebody has the flu. Hard to find in California. CVS pharmacies in the area ran out of Tamiflu. Independent pharmacy also exhausted its supply. Increased demand for Tamiflu in California may have led, may have led to some stores being temporarily out of stock. It may have. Don't you think increased demand? Don't you think these pharmacies would have had Tamiflu right smack in the pharmacy considering that we're heading into flu season? So, yeah, and the may have, it comes from a CV, CVS spokeswoman, may have led to some stores being temporal, temporarily out of stock. Other pharmacies reported that they were running low on the medicine or were completely out. Um, they're all on back order right now. We can't get it, but there's not a national shortage. Don't you think that these pharmacies could call up a pharmacy, I don't know, let's say Nevada or Arizona, and have them ship some Tamiflu over? Maybe that's against the law. Who knows? Um, host sellers are running out. But health officials say it's not too late to get the flu shot. <laughs> All right. So the H3N2 does not respond well to the flu vaccine, but it's not too late to get it. Go get it. 
The vaccine is recommended for everyone older than six months. Even if you're healthy, the downside of getting the flu vaccine is low. It's relatively inexpensive. Hell, there's an awful lot of places that give it out free. And when you see something given out for free, if that doesn't beg questions in your mind that something's going on here, well, I don't know about that mind of yours. All you're going to get, though, is a sore arm. That's it. Yeah. No evidence of flu vaccine giving people flu. Yeah, there is. Uh, vaccine can also mean not getting sick and then infecting someone else. So, you get that flu vaccine that's not responsive to this flu. You get it because that's going to keep you well and therefore you're a responsible human being because you won't be infecting other people. Sickening. Sickening what we have going here. Southern California braces for heavy rainstorm Monday threatening burn areas with runoff. Beginning Monday. It's and the heaviest rain expected in some burn areas. Four inches of rain is expected in eastern Santa Barbara County and western Ventura County over 12 hours Monday evening through Tuesday morning. Unfortunately, it's centered almost exactly where the Thomas fires were. And that's from uh, Kathy Hoxie, a meteorologist with the National Weather Service. Hoxie. Hoke. It's a hoke. See. Statement. Biggest concern, debris flows, flash flooding, thunderstorms in the region are most likely Tuesday. The problem with thunderstorms is that they can produce a lot of rain intensely in a small area. I posted a video uh, not too long ago that they were warning of mudslides, mudslides from these rains. And we all know that we don't have natural weather anymore, so they're bringing this upon you in California, Southern California, the burn areas deliberately. Deliberately. So, <clears throat> you've had a couple of um, sizable earthquakes on the West Coast. You've had an awful lot of them. Strong earthquakes hit San Francisco and Mount St. Helens and experts warn they may be four shocks for something larger. A 4.4 magnitude quake struck Berkeley, California, just prior to 3 a.m. on Thursday morning. A 3.9 magnitude earthquake hit Mount St. Helens in Washington State on Wednesday. 68 earthquakes in the vicinity of Mount St. Helens since New Year's Day. And there have been a total of three... Um, 629 earthquakes in the state of California within 30 days. So this Berkeley earthquake jolted people out of bed. Uh, felt like a truck hit my house. Seismologists have stated that it could be possible for a foreshock of something larger. And here, a seismologist from the University of California said the region is not prepared to deal with the fallout from such an earthquake in California. You're not prepared. What the hell are they doing with your tax dollars? You're not prepared for uh, the big one. Well, why not? They've been warning of the big one coming for years. Mount St. Helens, they consider this to be a very unusual 3.9 magnitude earthquake. Some believe that it could be a sign that the volcano is recharging earthquake swarms at Mount St. Helens. It's not unusual. But we have seen over the first four days of 2018 
what they have seen is, well, I guess, causing seismologists eyebrows to raise. A larger quake could follow within 48 hours. Mount St. Helens, well, 1980, the deadliest and most economically damaging volcanic event in the history of the United States. 96 miles from Seattle, 50 miles from Portland. So, um, I just want to show you in telecast. And I took some, I captured some of these ultra low frequencies down here or up here. You've got ultra low frequencies coming out of Portland, um, north of Seattle, Spokane. And this is the video that I took earlier that you have tremendous amount of geoengineering going on. Um, which we all know, right? We all know this. We all friggin' know. And this is just off the coast of Southern California. And they're expecting, expecting heavy rains for you Monday night and Tuesday morning. Here you go, guys. All artificial. And it looks like the jet stream is kind of going in, I don't know, kind of strange directions. Um, yeah. Just want to show you. Jet stream kind of going off to the west in the mid-Pacific, but then it goes off to the east and the... Okay. I don't know. Is that normal? It doesn't seem normal. Um, I do want to show you the obvious ultra-low frequencies. Ultra-low frequencies can induce earthquakes. So when I shot this earlier, or captured it earlier, it was more pronounced. They're inducing earthquakes in your area. No, this is not normal. Ultra low, you can see the bands, the very straight defined lines. So, you know, look, I've seen this before. Um, you didn't have a mega earthquake. So I am simply posting this to say if you're not prepared at this point, you guys on the West Coast, for anything to happen, then you really have not been paying attention. Or you have some kind of suicidal wish, perhaps, but you really do need to prepare. So get everything that you need in, in a bag, ready to go. Keep your cars. Keep your cars filled with gas, though. You know, no one's going to be alerting you to these um, earthquakes. Or perhaps the 4.9, the, the 4.4 4 4 is your alert. So the ultra-low frequencies are still going on strong. hours later. I hope nothing happens and I hope that you all stay safe. I do want to bring your attention to Dutch Sense's channel. Everybody should be bookmarked to this. He has a live uh, broadcast going on and Dutch Sense has been rather accurate with forecasting earthquakes. So you guys in California, I suggest checking Dutch Sense's channel. 
I don't know how often he, he posts, but I would check it once a day. Maybe check it in the morning and check it in the evening and at night. I'll link below to this seismic monitor. And it is a seismic monitor for the world, but here you can put in North America and you get North America. Not all of the earthquakes, but I want to bring your attention to, well, let's see, this 4.6 on January 1. Uh, the depth, 10 kilometers, 12 kilometers, 7 kilometers. That is an indication that it was induced. Induced. These very shallow earthquakes are, um, it's kind of like a harp signature. Not that it has to be harp up in Alaska, but you know what? You know, harp has kind of become this generic term for weather modification um, with the use of any kind of frequencies, but it's being induced. We don't have anything natural. Natural processes are gone because man has taken over. So you guys, please, please, just prepare. Don't freak out. Just prepare to leave if you need to. All right, guys. I hope everybody is doing okay, staying sane. All links are below.